This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Uh, now, on a Wednesday, lately I've been putting up videos that have been a beginner's guide to this, that or the other. I've done like string bending and power chords and a few other things. Uh, and on the live stream last Friday, someone suggested I do a beginner's guide to home recording. So that's what we're doing today, okay? This is by no means a comprehensive everything you need to know kind of video. Um, this is just kind of get you started what we're going to cover today is how to connect everything up what equipment you need um, basically what software to use and how to configure it and um, you know installing a plug-in or two and basically how to use it and so on enough to kind of get you playing um, and recording some drums bass and guitar and making a, a finished recording with that um, if you're after more information from after this then check out the excellent Adam Steele uh, uh, Reaper Basics video that I've linked to in the description, along with all of the links to the equipment and software I'm using today. So, first of all, let's have a look at the equipment you're going to need and how it all connects up. Okay, quite obviously, you're going to need a guitar, and then the guitar connects to this piece of kit, an interface. Uh, basically, uh, a piece of equipment which turns the analog audio signal from your guitar into a digital format that your computer can chew on. The interface has an audio output which goes to your powered speakers, and essentially what's going to happen is that once it's connected up to the computer, the interface is going to be acting as your sound card, so all of the sound that is going through your computer, backing tracks or your guitar signal or YouTube videos that you might be watching, anything is basically going to be coming out through those speakers via the interface. And on the subject of connecting the interface to the computer, it's dead easy. It's just a USB cable into the PC. And once you've done all of that, everything is connected up as it should be. Right, so everything's now connected. What you now need is some software. And the, the most important software before you can do anything else is you need some drivers for your interface. Now, maybe the manufacturer of your interface uh, provides their own bespoke drivers for the interface. I'm using a Behringer interface and they don't do that. They just uh, tell you to install something called ASIO for all asio for all it's linked in the description uh, asio stands for audio stream input output basically and um you know asio for all is just a catch-all driver for any asio compliant device so you're going to need that or you're going to need some kind of drivers for your um, for your interface. You're also going to need uh, a digital audio workstation or DAW as they are called. I'm using Reaper because it's, uh, it's well, it's free to evaluate for 60 days and then it's something ridiculously cheap, like about 70 quid for a license after that. Very, very good value for money and uh, very, I think, intuitive software to use and very configurable. So let's assume you've got everything connected up and you've got the software downloaded. Let's now have a look at how you set up uh, Reaper and and how you are going to begin recording with it. Here it is. Okay, so you've got Reaper installed and you've got your interface drivers installed. A uh, little bit of work to do before we start making music and that is all to do with the buffer size. Essentially what we want to do is avoid any um, noticeable latency. That's the phenomenon where you play a note on your guitar and then there is a noticeable delay between you actually hearing that note coming out of the speakers. Very, very off-putting when that happens. Uh, and this is all to do with the buffer size. And basically, uh, let me explain that. We're going to go into this uh, setting here, into, into the audio device settings. And because I'm using ASIO, ASIO or ACO for all as my driver, I'm going to go into ASIO configuration. There it is, like that. And you've got this little slider here. Now, essentially, the further you turn it this way, the further you move it that way, the bigger the buffer size. And that means that um, the music is going to play back very smoothly. There's going to be no glitches and it's going to be... 
uh, you know, very, very kind of smooth in operation and you're not going to have any kind of stuttering uh, as you're playing back audio. So if we, if we do that, then uh, you'll see here that what we've got is it's going to take 52 milliseconds for the interface to turn the uh, audio signal from your guitar into a digital signal uh, that Reaper can use. And then it's going to take another 52 milliseconds for um, it to turn it back into an audio signal that you'll hear coming out of your speakers. And that is like 104 milliseconds. That is going to be a massively noticeable uh, gap between playing a note and hearing it. So let's go in and uh, kind of turn it the other way. Uh, so we'll go into that again. So let's turn the slider down all the way to the other end and then we'll do that. So there you can see it's going to be 7.1 milliseconds to, um, you know, to kind of get the audio in and another 7.1 milliseconds to get the audio out again. And that is going to mean that there will be virtually, well, none at all, no, um, noticeable lag between you playing a note and hearing it. The problem there is that you're going to have glitchy, stuttery um, audio playback because the buffer size is just too small to, to facilitate, um, you know, smooth playback. So setting this um, this latency, this buffer size rather, is always going to be a compromise, and that's going to be dictated by, you know, the spec of your computer really and um, how much latency you uh, you can tolerate. Uh, personally, I always set it to 256 samples buffer size. And if we go to uh, that now, we will see that that gives me 11 milliseconds in and 11 milliseconds out, which is, you know, acceptable. I can work with that. Um, you know, that's, that's, for me, that's not um, a massively uh, off putting or noticeable amount of latency. So that's that set. Now, the next thing we need to do is um, start recording. So what I'm going to do here, we've got um, a tempo of 120 beats per minute. Um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so I'm going to double click uh, anywhere in here and that will give me an audio track. There we go. Now, uh, excuse me while I just plug in a guitar. And what I'm going to do now, there we go, the guitar is plugged in. Uh, I'm going to turn the metronome on, so I've got some kind of reference to play to. So that's just that uh, button there. And you can set all kinds of things in here. You can set like a count in before recording, a count in before playback, how many measures you want that count in to be. Um, uh, yeah, let's let's put a count in before recording and let's have just a single bar, single measure of uh, count in and then that is set there. Now what I want to do is record some guitar onto that track so I have to enable the recording on that track so I'm just going to hit that little red button there and if I just kind of strum a few bits and pieces on the guitar you know you can see that's moving the meters and I'm now recording okay uh, I'm not recording, I'm ready to record. Now, there are two ways that you can uh, instigate a recording in Reaper. You can either hit the big red record button here, or as you can see, the um, the sh keyboard shortcut for that, which I tend to use, is Control-R. So if I hit Control-R, I'll get the count in, and then I'll just strum some chords. Apologies for that, I should have tuned my guitar first, but you get the idea, okay? So that is just literally the guitar uh, going straight into Reaper uh, without any sort of coloration on the sound. Uh, would be nice if we could hear that with an amplifier, wouldn't it? So um, I'm just going to turn the uh, record off there. So I'm going to go into here now, the effects button for this particular track. And I'm just going to use a uh, Blue Cat Free Amp. It's a fantastic little uh, free amp plugin, and there's all kinds of uh, factory presets in here. Uh, this classic clean comp is um, a nice little sound. It's basically based on a Fender amp sound. So if I uh, now play that back, you'll hear it.
and that's what the um, that amp sounds like there. So you you know you can record guitar, and then you can you can via this effects menu here, you can just add as many effects as you want. You know you can download plugins uh, to. Um, you know, kind of put chorus and reverb. All of those, are, I mean, there's there's uh, choruses and reverbs built into Reaper that come with them. But you know, there's plenty of other ones out there uh, that you can uh, try and use. And you know, if you're going to use something like Guitar Rig or any of the other uh, paid for packages that you know that have effects built in, and you know, you're good to go basically. So that's uh, essentially how you can record an instrument in Reaper, and you know, just give it a go, see what you uh, what you can do with it. Uh, next up, we're going to look at uh, putting in uh, some virtual instruments. Um, it's not just about the guitar, is it? You need some bass and drums there. So that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, so that's the basics of how to record some audio from, from a guitar or something like that. We, we could probably do with some drums on there. Um, so here's some information on how to get some drums involved in the uh, music and then, you know, some information on uh, putting bass lines and stuff like that on top of it and how to end up with a finished recording with multiple instruments on it. Here it is. Okay, let's take a look at uh, getting some drums in, into the music. Uh, I'm going to be using this plugin here, MT Power Drum Kit 2, and there's a link to this in the description. Uh, as you can see, it's a free download, and you can't really complain about that, can you? Uh, so what you do once you've uh, downloaded uh, this software here is you go into this folder. So Program Files, Reaper, and then there will be a folder where you, where you keep your plugins. This is, I think I ended up creating this folder myself, VST, um, which is the, the industry standard for all of these kind of plugins. Uh, basically, I think it stands for Virtual Studio Technology. But these are the two files that you need to move from wherever you've downloaded them from the uh, MT Power Drum Kit website. You move them to this folder here, and you have now installed some drums so now let's look at what you do with those drums let's just in uh, kind of fire up reaper and uh here we go there's that uh, guitar part we recorded earlier i'm just going to get rid of that track for now uh so we'll just go remove tracks okay now right click in this area here and you will see insert virtual instrument on new track and there is the MT Power Drum Kit, and we just install that. It takes a moment or two to load everything, so just talk amongst yourselves while we're waiting for that. And um, there we go. Now, you get this little dialog box here where you can choose to have all of the different elements of the drum kit, the bass drum, the snare, the hi-hat, the cymbals, and so on, all on separate tracks. There are benefits to doing that, but let's keep it simple for the moment and just click No. And this is uh, what you'll see when you uh, load MT Power Drum Kit. Well, actually, what you'll see to begin with is a nag screen asking for a donation. Because I use this all the time, I sent them a few quid, and then that gets rid of the nag screen forever. Uh, so we're going to go into grooves. Here we go. And if I just go into this intro section here, you can see we've got four, four grooves that will work between 60 and 150 beats per minute. Um, I'm just going to take this first intro here, essentially the count in, and drag and drop it into that track there. What I always like to do at this point is double click into that there, and you can see there is the count in and a little bit of a fill. I'm just going to select these three uh counting beats here which are played on a hi-hat and i just like to kind of have them a little bit louder so i drag and drop them until i've got them on a cross stick and that is just much more noticeable to my ears when i'm playing so we've got a count in let's go into the uh, actual drum grooves themselves and you've got all of these here uh, to choose from uh, and then a bunch more there and a bunch more there and so on and so on. There's, there's, you know, 
ample choice here. Later on, it's worthwhile getting into looking at uh, learning to program your own uh, drum grooves and stuff. But, you know, just to get started, there's nothing wrong with using presets. So I'm just going to use, I don't know, let's go for groove number three there. Now, you see it usually defaults to three bars. That's because drummers tend to think in terms of uh, three bars of the groove, then a one bar fill. So I'm going to drag that groove down into the composer window here and then add a fill on the end of that. So I've now got four bars of drums. Then let's do it again. Uh, another three bars of drums and a different fill. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, go too far with this. There's eight bars. That's plenty to illustrate what we're doing. So now I take this um, this little composition that I've done here, drag and drop into the track, and there we go. We've now got eight bars of drums. Uh, what we also need, though, is an ending. So, you know, just like a cymbal crash and a, a kick drum. So I'm just going to... Um, Basically select a bar there, there we go, and then go insert new MIDI item, and there we have a new MIDI item, and if I double click on that, it takes me into this piano roll view, and each key on the keyboard there is a different element of the drum kit. And just from experience, I happen to know that C2 is the kick drum, and that C sharp 3 is the crash symbol so there we go we've got uh, an ending let's um now just and i just hit escape there to kind of clear that selection there uh, so now let's go back to the beginning of the uh, piece and hit play and let's hear what that sounds like And there you have it. That is the eight bars of drums with a one bar counting that we've uh, done as easily as that. How how easy was that? And of course, then you can uh, play some bass and some guitar on top of that. Now, on the topic of uh, bass, I was going to show you how to uh, program some MIDI bass. But to be honest, there is no real reason to um, have a MIDI bass line when you can buy a bass guitar this cheaply. You know, it's, no, it's not going to be the best bass guitar in the world, but, you know, for 88 quid, um, you know, and you're going to be learning a new instrument. I've done a, a video on how to play simple bass lines, you know, if you're a guitarist and you're kind of looking at going to the, uh, going to the dark side, as it were, and learning to play some bass, then, you know, just grab something like this and watch my video on playing, uh, you know, bass lines. And, um, you know, you can then put a bass line in. Tell you what, let me just go and grab a bass and I'm going to do that now. I'll be back in a sec. And by the magic of the edit, I'm back now with my bass in hand. So I'm just going to turn the record arm off on that track there. And in the same way as we did earlier, I'm just going to double click uh, into here and that's going to give me a track that I can record the bass onto. So I'm just going to double click into there and just label this track as bass. Uh, just keep it in save as I'm going along as well. And um, I'm just going to play some bass now. Uh, so arm this track to record and then uh, control R on the keyboard, if you remember, to set the recording going. And here we go. Now, when you want to uh, mix that, uh, just go into this menu here. And what we want to do is uh, basically hit right. So all of the uh, fader positions are basically going to be remembered. And then if we go into the view menu and go to the master track, or sorry, the mixer rather, there it is there. And you can see some of the levels are peaking a bit there. So I'm just going to clear those. Um, so we've got bass and drums here. Let's unarm that from recording. Um, so what I'm going to do is just 
kind of turn the the drums and the bass down a little bit because as you saw earlier some of the um some of the f meters were clipping into the red a little bit and let's uh, have a listen back to that And you saw when I was, um, you know, kind of playing that back there, I was moving the fader on the bass track just a little bit. Now, if I go into here, you can see the, um, the, the, the envelope there that I created when I was moving that bass fader uh, up and down. So now if we go into the uh, read um, setting on that menu there and go back to the... Uh, the mixing board, you'll see that uh, fader moving. Now that wasn't me moving that fader, that was Reaper moving that fader because it was uh, following the envelope that I'd created when I'd uh, been in the, uh, where is it, the right setting there. And doing that, you can create, um, you know, the, the mix that you want to hear. And then, you know, once it's all recorded and all of the levels and all the faders are where you want them to be, then just go to the file menu and go render. Or again, there's a keyboard shortcut there. And uh, we can call this um, test bass and drums. There we go. And then it outputs it as a WAV file. And once you've got it as a WAV file, you can turn it into an MP3. You can, you know, put it into any format that you uh, want to do it with, with any number of converters or just do it in Audacity or something like that. But crucially, you've uh, got some drums, you've got some bass. And as I say, you can record some guitar onto it in exactly the same manner. You've done a recording and it's hopefully pretty straightforward. And there you have it. If you've done all of that, you should now be able to record some uh, drums, some bass and some guitar and have some form of finished recording. As I say, if you want more details and more information on this, then check out the in-depth guide that Adam Steele does uh, in his Reaper Basics video. Fantastically helpful uh, video that, and as I say, it's linked in the description. And that's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video, found it useful, informative, and if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not give me a like while you're at it uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel all of the links are in the description below along with all the other links that i've mentioned today uh, and it would be much appreciated if you would you know just kind of uh, give me a little bit of help down there i know a lot of people are doing so and it is fantastically appreciated i'm very very grateful and you know thank you to everybody who's doing that and thank you in advance if you're thinking of doing that and with that i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for for watching thank you for your time uh, look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane see you next time bye for now <laughs>